Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to transform a tiny YouTube space such as this to something like this. Let's go. This video is organized into three sections, lighting, camera angles, and sound setup. And I'll also throw in a bonus tip at the end. So what exactly is a micro YouTube studio? Well, I kind of define it as a small space where you're constantly having to shift things around to get the shot you want. And also a space where you've got limited choices for lighting angles and camera angles, and where you can like set up the camera to get the best shot. For example, in this space, it's about 5.3 meters squared. That's the whole area. But if you just count the kind of usable area and not the part where the door entry is there. It's about 4.5 square meters of usable space. And of course you've got the desk which takes up a big chunk of that. When it comes to lighting, there's a few different things to consider. First of all, uh, there's a window just over there. And if you've seen some of my older videos, you may have seen some strange color casts or some of the skin tones weren't too great at times. Part of this was using an older camera which didn't have zebras, so just getting the basic exposure was a bit trickier. But also I had these kind of beige, not particularly nice colored curtains, and they were kind of semi-transparent as well. So when I had them closed and it was sunny outside, you'd get this strange kind of brown, orange tone in the room which wasn't very pleasing. So what I did first of all is I replaced those and I just got some cheap black material. It's kind of like white on one side, black on the other side and made some makeshift curtains out of those and I faced the black side into the room so it helps to control the reflections in the room. And they're also blackout so they don't let any daylight in at all. And as you can see from the walls here, I replaced the white walls and painted the whole space black. I left the ceiling white basically because I couldn't be bothered to do it. And it kind of helps to control the lighting in the space as well. I've got a lot less reflections bouncing around the room. This is the paint that I used and it's important if you're going to be painting the walls in your studio space to choose a paint that's quite matte or flat because you don't want a lot of glossy paint on the walls. It's going to show up some hot spots and it's going to help to like reflect the light around the room. In the case of this space I chose to go with black but I could have chosen a darker grey or you know another colour but I just wanted something that was going to make it very easy to control the lighting in the space and also allow me to put a few accents on the wall that will really stand out in the future. The minute I've got the orange pavo tube and the blue pavo tube at the back but in the future I want to get a few other things on the walls just to create some more interest. So once you've controlled the outside light and also the light that's reflecting off the walls, the next thing to look at is lighting. So I'm currently being lit up here by a Aperture 120D Mark II and I've got the large Aperture softbox on it with the egg crate just to control some of the reflections. I've tried to get the softbox as close to me as possible just to create that softer look on my face and also because it's a micro YouTube studio you don't really have much choice. So the 120D is the main key light and as I just mentioned I've got the Pavo tubes in the background there and I'm just using that to try and create a bit of extra depth in the frame. Down here just on my left I've got an Aperture MC and that's set to orange light and I don't know if you can see it's creating this subtle orange glow in the background, once again just to add a bit of extra interest and depth to the scene. I could add some extra lights or small lamps just to act as practicals, but they wouldn't actually be used to like light my face or light the scene itself, once again to add some more interest to the scene. And to get the metering how I want it, I made use of this colour checker passport video. This is the white balance target. And you also have this section which has got white, middle grey and black and also the colour chips. So I use that to get the correct exposure for S-Log3 on the A7S3. I'll be publishing a complete guide to S-Log3 exposure and how to get blacks that aren't really noisy in a future video. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. One of the tricky things about working in a micro YouTube studio is getting enough camera angles to keep your videos interesting. So ideally you want to try and get multiple camera angles that you can use in different videos or perhaps sometimes even in the same video just to keep things interesting. When it comes to setting up your camera angles, think about where the corner or the L of the room is and try and shoot towards that corner. That will help to create a bit of depth. So that blue pavo tube, where are we, in the background there, that's set up right in the corner where the door 
door is to the room. So that's what I mean by the corner or the L of the room. The camera angle here is looking past me towards that corner of the room. And we've got a few different layers of interest here. You've obviously got myself, you've got the PC and the speaker here, and you probably can't see much of the monitor there. And then you've got the orange pavo tube, and then in the background, the blue pavo tube, just to create that sense of depth. When it comes to lenses, you're probably going to have to use more of a wide angle lens just because you're working in a smaller cramped space. A wide angle lens is also going to exaggerate that depth in the frame to help try and create some interest. One thing to be aware of though is that if you use a wide angle lens, you might end up with some distortion um, on the face. Also on a wide angle lens, you're going to have a bit of a reduced depth of field, which means you're going to maybe need a lens with a wider aperture, just so you can kind of separate you from the background. Notice how in the back, the pavo tubes are slightly out of focus. I'm shooting this video on a 20 millimeter lens, and I'm currently shooting at f1.8. So using this big aperture is helping to blur the background a bit. Also, when you're setting up your shots, try and create some layers or depth in the scene, such as like the computer and the lights in the background. So in this space, I've managed to get three distinct camera angles. I've got this one, which I'm calling angle one, which is shooting towards the door there. I also set up this angle and you can see that this is a flat angle so there's not as much depth in it. And I've also got this third angle. Notice in this angle I'm shooting towards the corner of the room to create some depth and I've also got the computer in the foreground here once again to try and create some layers in the frame. If you found this video useful so far be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. The next thing to work on is the sound in here. You can probably hear the echo in my voice at the minute. And if I clap, you can probably hear that kind of echo or that flutter. So it doesn't sound very good. Got a lot of bare walls in here. There is carpet on the floor, which helps a little bit, but let's go and add some acoustic treatment to this room. This is going to be very makeshift and then we'll come back and see if it makes a difference. Just trying to make these like little acoustic panels out of some old cushions, some old outdoor cushions. So I've just cut some of this material. This is the stuff that I use to make the curtains. And <laughs> it's gonna be a very rough and ready construction with just some carpet tape. So I'm just gonna wrap this over here and then tape along. Hopefully that'll hold it. I'm definitely no haberdashery expert, if that's even the right term. Right, so it's not gonna win any design awards. As you can see, pretty rough and ready, but doesn't really matter. I think it'll blend in a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. So now I've finished these sound panels, I'm probably just gonna hang them with some of those 3M sticky hooks that you can stick on the wall. And then on the back here, just, I'm not sure, put a bit of string or something. I've also got a couple of these sheets of, uh, it's like foam, quite thin. So it's not really for sound absorption, but it will kind of help a little bit and it will help with some of the reflections and the echoes of the sound a bit in the room. So I'm not sure, I'd quite like to put one above my desk where I film, maybe on the ceiling. I've bought a few different 3M hooks, I'm not sure how successful that's gonna be. And then maybe one on another wall kind of out of shot, I'm not sure yet. Okay, that's all the sound panels installed. Got the three cushions there covered in the black material plus one extra just on the back there. And then just above me, I've got that thin piece of uh, foam. I've got the other second thin piece of foam on the back wall just behind me and to the left there. And I've also got an unused single mattress, like a foam mattress. That's just in the corner over there to help with some of the echo. So hopefully you can hear a bit of a difference already. Let me just do the clap test. So I hope you can hear that there's a bit of a difference from earlier. There's not that kind of echo and that kind of fluttering high-pitched sound. 
at the start of the video. I promised you a bonus tip at the end, so here it is. Once you've figured out where you want to set up your camera angles, make sure that you actually write them down. So write down your light placement, write down your tripod placement. Keep a note of your different settings for your lights, your camera ISO and aperture to make it easy to set up the camera angles and shots in the future. So I hope you found that video useful and hopefully it will help you set up your own YouTube studio. If you like this video, please click the like button. That really helps the channel. And also leave a comment if you've got any questions or suggestions. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications. See ya.